Here we are then for more F1 Manager. Before we jump into this episode, go check out the last one because we made history and I don't know how it happened, but it was mental. We've had two 10 out of 10 absolute bangers in the last two episodes to the point where the views have actually picked up on the series so massive shout out to you guys for that and the series is actually doing pretty well now and i'm actually really starting to enjoy it and get into it so yeah we're gonna jump into this one it's the halfway stage of the season almost as we go to silverstone our home race and we're looking to score big points yet again in the battle for third in the constructors so leave a like subscribe for more support the channel and let's get into it Right, so first order of business before we jump into Silverstone is to add development points to Seb and Fernando. So Sebastian first. We will go for adaptability as that is lacking a little bit for Sebastian. As for Fernando, we will go for adaptability, which is also lacking for him. Playing it pretty safe. I think we can beat Merck for third and definitely bat Walpin for fourth. That's a certain thing for now. We've got a nice cushion and buffer over McLaren now from it. We can't rest on our laurels though. We got caught out last season. McLaren got the better of us. But there's definitely positives to take here. And also in the drivers, both drivers in the top 10, I'd like to keep it there. Gap from Perez down to Seb is literally seven points. And then there's a 10 point gap between Seb and Bottas. And then there's quite a large gap down to 13th. So we're looking pretty locked in in both the drivers and constructors. Now we've spent the point. The next thing we have to do is invest some of this cash. So we're going to rank up the design center to level three or level four, actually, in this case, which will give us five extra designers to really push on with upgrades. So let's get that on 105 days to complete. So we've got the summer break coming up soon as well, which will help cut down some of that time. New ATR period starts today, which we are going to save these hours on the wind tunnel and also the CFD to invest those in a couple of weeks time. For now, full focus is on upgrades arriving. Board confidence immensely high after you know the last result from the board which is of course what we want to see so three days till the chassis arrives 12 days till the front wing arrives i think we're only gonna get the chassis in time for the next race so that's okay we'll have one upgrade this race one upgrade the next so we'll be improving race by race which is exciting what we'll save up some cash yet again as well 5.8 mil in case we have to spend it but we'll save up and we'll sort this out during the summer break very happy to renew both individuals, to be honest. Right, this is it now. Big upgrade. Chassis here. Let's try and manufacture and improve. I'll, I'll emergency two. Yeah, I was just thinking that. We'll emergency two and then bring another two on rush after. Here is the monthly car development. So we have some slight improvements, to be fair. Engine cooling now 15th. High speed 14th is actually now the strongest part of our car. In dirty air, that is. But also in outright cooling as well. We're actually more of a high speed kind of car. Top speed has dropped a little bit. So for Silverstone, we're going to guarantee Q2 and P15. We'll guarantee P15 as a finishing position as well. I could go higher, but I'd rather just get the cash at this point. And we are one race away from completing the qualifying streak. We have rain. Ooh, okay. We had rain last season. This could be interesting. So that's that done. FP2, lovely jubbly. We'll try and see if we can get Seb closer. Currently 10% away. Friday running complete Leclerc. Gasly, penalties. Uh, we're chilling at the very bottom with our super worn engine and gearbox. As for car performance right now, looking pretty decent. We should get pretty close to 100 on this. And we should also get 100 on this as well. So gearbox switch. Gearbox 3 will now be our new race gearbox. Gearbox 2 will now become our practice gearbox. Same for Fernando, <laughs> his gearbox is on 12%, so we'll move him onto the gearbox too. Car was great. Copy. Hmm, that's throwing me off, that's caught me off guard that has. Uh, I, might, I might go blind to qualifying. But if, I, if you go blind, if you make a setup change, do you, you lose on the 15 out of 15 performance bonus, right? So practice finished, everything okay with Fernando, but not ideal with Sebastian. Three consecutive runs on 90% setup confidence. Got to try and figure out what this is. That's the one. I'm going to I'm going to take a chance with this and see what happens. But this will be more than 90. Looks like no traffic for Fernando. No traffic for Seb. I think he just cleared Latifi in time before Brooklyn. Alonso traffic though at the final chicane. Sebastian a fraction quicker after that first lap. Second lap on the way. Alonso will now have to encounter Sonoda, who I think is on a lap actually. So Schumacher and Magnussen are the next bit of traffic. Alonso is going to hit them at Stowe. 
clears the note. Let's see, both drivers improving. Alonso does not improve, Sebastian does, so there we go. Interesting, Alonso definitely has more pace to find. It says unknown, but 99% drivers have confidence. So, happy days. Good adjustment, I think. Okay, on to the final lap. Both drivers get over the line in time. Leclerc makes a mistake. So Fernando does. Sector one is personal best. Seb down on his first sector. Bottas finishing the lap. Ocon as well. Check the flag out. Hamilton improves. So does Ricardo up to P6. Norris only P11. Could be in danger here. Joe does not improve in terms of position. Let's see. Alonso will be the next one through. Seems like we're a bit off pace at this event. Magnussen just ahead. I think Alonso will definitely get these two. Let's see. Up to the line. Does Alonso get himself out of trouble? Yes, he does. And Sebastian safe, but let's see what he does. Doesn't improve. Wow, so we could be in trouble this race. Not as good pace, to be fair. So Q1 in the bag. Signs looking rapid. And we're off the pace. Looks like a Q2 knockout for both cars at this rate. Right, so Q2. Let's see what this first banker is. Alonso will hit traffic in the form of Albon and Verstappen. He's going to clear Albon on the back straight just about before Brooklands. And he'll clear Verstappen on the old pit straight. Seb won't have traffic issues. So let's see. First lap on the board. Alonso 28-2. Sebastian Vettel. Let's see what he does in response. Tenth quicker. So Seb keeps the pace up. So Fernando has work to do. Realistically, we're looking at a double Q2 knockout and P14-15 based off the Q1 pace. But let's see if we can be proved wrong. To be fair, we're P11, P12. But I'm expecting I mean, Verstappen will definitely improve. Check the flag out. Gasly finishes his lap up to P4. Let's see. There's already a big gap over a tenth to P10, which is not ideal. Personal best sector one, though, from Fernando. Sector two coming up. Let's see what we're looking at here. Personal best. Norris has crossed the line and finished his lap. Isn't super safe. Could potentially get Norris. Seb is not improving, which is interesting. Alonso. Across the start finish. What does he do? Oh, yes, he gets Lando. Fantastic. Sebastian Vettel. Does he improve at all? No, he did not. Wow, that's disappointing. So, Alonso with the clutch. So, there we go. Double Q2 knockout. Alonso clutching up and showing his true pace once again. Sebastian going slower in Q2 than Q1, which is disappointing. But still over a tenth off Norris. Alonso showing his pace there. Going 0.7 of a tenth quicker in Q2. Top 12, a bit out of reach for us, really. So, yeah, can't really complain. Lando also, had he matched his Q1 time, would have been ahead of Fernando. So, yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're kind of Q2 material, but we're not really anywhere near the top 10. So, we'll see. Luckily, it's a wet race, so the, at least there's some rain forecast. So, let's have a look at this rain. We've got a rain a quarter of the way in, then it stops. Then it picks back up throughout the entire midway of the race, stops again, and then finishes with rain. So, looking at this... In principle, we're looking at a short stint on the soft to start with, and then we could be holding a set of inters the whole race, maybe moving to wets for the end. Both drivers will start on that soft tyre, and then we'll just wing it, basically. That's what we're going to do. So let's get into it. Let's see what happens. Both drivers will start on softs. Let's send it. As the sun continues to shine, it seems like nothing can dampen the mood of excitement here at the track. Looking here at Fernando Alonso, with their starting position in the back 10, they'll have their work cut out for them. And for the second driver, it's Sebastian Vettel. They're in the back half of the pack, so they'll need to work hard if they want a podium finish. The teams are ready to go. Hold on tight, it's the British Grand Prix. It's lights out, and away we go. Underway then. This is it. Let's see. Off the line, Sebastian gets Norris, and Alonso is going to get Leclerc, who of course has that grid penalty. So, decent start, although Norris does fight back. 
Taking a look at the tyre compounds. It's only us on softs, which is interesting. So we're going a bit different on strategy this race. I do want to check for that rain straight away. Yeah, so rain inbound most of the race, to be fair. This could be interesting. Could be between inters and wets the entire time, but we want this rain to arrive on time and not be delayed because we're starting on the softs. Norris getting back in front. Alonso also staying behind Leclerc. So end of lap one, pretty much status quo. To be fair, the soft tyre will help us stay somewhat competitive. We are expecting rain pretty soon. Oh, wow. Copy. Okay, here's the Ferrari. Oh my god, this is a dodgy replay. Okay, there we go. Now it's catching up. Is it? No, it's not. It's bugged out. And there's the collision. It's caused absolute ah. carnage. Okay, right. So Stroll having a spin. Bit of a harsh penalty, but I guess a penalty regardless. The club with damage. Alonso managed to get away with it, and he's broken into the top 10. So what we'll do now with Sebastian is push a little bit here and try to crack on. Let Stroll and Leclerc pit, so that's going to also really Sebastian. So that will make the overtake on Norris a little bit easier. So let's see if Seb can get stuck in here and try to pass Lando Norris ASAP. And that way we're looking at points already here, which is very interesting. I'm going to try and save the tyres for a little bit longer. Rain still not inbound yet. Here comes Sebastian Vettel. Go on, Seb. Go on. Oh my god, another one. Ocon. So now Alonso P9 and Seb P11 about to be P10. Going for it here with Norris. Come on, Sebastian. We've got to try and go here. That's good. That's good. Ooh, okay, rain starting. Oh, wow. Okay. Cars are in. So this is happening fast. Interesting. It's arrived ahead of schedule, which is um, that's an interesting surprise. Looking at this, it's heavy rain for the most part. That's a simple rule in F1. That's all you want. Be on the right tire at the right time. So we'll double stack. I've got Seb on slowdown mode. Alonso pushing flat out. But we'll take the stack because the rain's falling quickly here. So let's see. Seb will lose a little bit of time, but hopefully won't be major. We just need to charge up. Okay, copy. And then Perez and Russell staying out, so they could be in trouble. This rain is going to be pretty intense, I think. We could be onto the full wets very, very shortly. Sebastian getting held. And this is not going well. We've been held terribly. Oh, God. We've lost so many places. For the second time this season, we've been screwed over by a pit box location. So remaining cars who were yet to stop are now in. So we're all getting a few places Aston back, but... With a great play there. They've moved up a place. Far from ideal. The fact that Sonoda has jumped us and is actually ahead of us, net position on intermediates is a joke. Alonso back to P11 as he overtakes Magnussen. Got to pass Williams. Come on. Let's try and go, mate. It's time to go. Looks like the Williams is an absolute cruise missile on a straight. Okay, there it is. Nice. Job done. So P13, P11. It's not a terrible considering how long Alonso got held in the pit stop. But not ideal. Anyway, Alonso all over the back of Pierre Gasly and Lando Norris here. Looking like might drop, actually. Could be interesting, this. This could be an interesting phase. The weather forecast isn't totally accurate. So it's meant to be raining right now, and it isn't. And we've got a dry period coming in. We'll set Alonso to overtake here. I feel like we can pass Gasly and Norris. Both of them. No DRS, but... I reckon we can get this done, so let's try. Overtake mode engaged. Because then we can latch on to Albon, hopefully. Rain now picking back up a little bit as well, which is good. It'll keep us on the intermediates. We're burning up our tyres a lot more than everybody else, as we've left them on aggressive, as you'd expect. Okay, now it's big rain. Big rain. This will be full wet on this lap. The question is, is the rain here to stay? At the moment, it feels like the, the forecast is ahead of schedule. So, I mean, it looks like it's going to be some pretty solid rain for the rest of the race, pretty much. And we could maybe take a full set of wets to the end. There's enough heavy rain here. I'm going to go for it. We're going to pop a uh, box or set of full wets. I'm going to take a chance. 
And we'll go with both cars. Again, I shouldn't really split them, but I'm convinced it's going to rain. So we'll go for the wets. To be fair, Gasly pits. So that could be the trigger that AI were looking for. Hopefully Seb doesn't get held that much. If at all, to be fair, he's not a million miles back, but also not as close as before. Uh, let's see. Alonso gets served. No delays this time. 2.7. Seb with a slight hold. Still got help there for Gasly, which is far from ideal, but luckily that wasn't too bad. We've timed this okay, actually. So this could be interesting. Might be worth pushing. But then again, if we, we could be going to the end on these, so I'll just uh, keep them there for now. Push. Now watch this. Here's Alonso's car. Alonso getting the horses out to get past Joe on the inside. Okay, so let's drive back up again. So we will just take it easy. Aston Martin with a great play there. They've moved up a place. Let's see what happened there. So this was the Aston Martin. So Seb ran the outside of Yuki. Pretty standard move there. This is interesting. What is the rain going to do? It's dropping right now, but it's up and down, up and down. It's going to be flirting around the four mark, the four millimeter mark, which is enough for four wets. Gasly pits for inters. Yellow flag. I'm not sure for who, but it's not a safety car. Let's have a look. All eyes on Kevin Magnussen here. Magnussen on the inters. What a spin out. Luckily, though, he was behind. Actually, he's ahead of us, to be fair, but he's got going again. So that will help Alonso close the gap a little bit. But Gasly on to the inter again, so... This is interesting. We're, go we're gonna... Hold it out on the wet for now. Ocon now pits, so... He's going back for the inter. The, the track is still drying. But we have more rain in three minutes. So it's gonna pick back up again. So now you can see the pace is dropping. Right, we're going to have to box for Inters. Um, the track's going to be drying. To be fair, everyone's on pretty knackered intermediates. So we haven't lost that much. They're going to have to stop for another set of Inters. So we're technically still on strategy. Right then, so Alonso in. Another double stack. So the Aston Martin boys have been busy today. Gap seems larger than it has been. So we'll get a slight hold. Very, very slight, if anything. And this time, no traffic in the pit lane. So no hold up. Fresh inters, so we'll get to push on these now. Seven Alonso dropped to pretty much last place, so work to be done. Seb will be last, I think. It's going to be close to Vocon, but I think he will be last. No, he just stays in front, I think. Just, yeah, just stays in front. Meanwhile, the leader's going through the final corner, so we don't want to get lapped. And oh my god, literally, I just went on Verstappen and he's just spun it. Okay, so the track is really drying up now, Verstappen with that spin. More rain in a minute, literally a minute. So we'll leave them in standard mode and we'll just speed this up a little bit for now and see what the next brother update is. Alonso threw on Latifi. Hopefully, Seb. Looks like Aston Martin have just gained a race position. We'll follow. Here's the replay. Now, watch this. Here's Alonso's car. Up the inside of the final chicane. Pretty straightforward overtake from Fernando. Seb ahead of Latifi now. So the AI pitting signs in Magnussen in. Aston Martin with a great play there. They've moved up a place. Seb with a mistake, but it looks okay to me. He's still going. Yeah, minor lock up there, but nothing major. Anyway, uh, Seb trying to go through here. And the outside at turn one on Mick Schumacher. Getting the overtake going. And that will get the job done. Happy days. Try and stick with Alonso here, Seb. We're not out of this just yet. Not out of this just yet. AI now has to stop another set of inters. Magnussen Sonoda in the pit lane for more tyres. So that will move us up a couple of places. Leclerc in the pit lane, but rejoins ahead of Alonso. The AI taking their tyres pretty far here. 33% for Verstappen. Hamilton as well. So a few different strategies going on with tyres. Interestingly, rain stops in two minutes. So could be looking at dry tyres. The question is, how long will it last? We have more rain inbound. To be fair, I could be looking at another set of inters rather than a set of drives as my next stop. I don't know if we'll get to the end on these. Bottas in the pit lane again. He just pit. And he's in yet again. He went to the full wets. That's interesting. So that will cost him a little bit of time anyway, drop him into, into range. Hamilton on 28% tyres. Albon 29. Some of these guys are going for very extreme strategies. Stroll pits. So that will move us up a place. 
Will it drop to below one before the rain arrives? Will any cars bite the bullet for a dry tire? Hamilton's on 20% intermediate. I've never seen this before. Albon 23. These guys are pushing their tires to the limit. Okay, Hamilton, Albon finally pit. Onto another set of inters. So I thought they might have gambled on drives, but intermediate it is. That was a very long stint from them. Okay, literally the range has started to fall now. It got to 1.19 and now the range's back. The best we can hope for really is get these tires to the end. Um, looking at cars ahead, Russell has to stop 20% tires. Gasly will also have to stop as well. And so will Joe. That isn't enough to move us into the points. Uh, Gasly, Joe will pit, they'll move behind us, but we'll be P11 and P12. Okay, the rain's falling heavy now. 3.6, though, it's going to just stall. Stalling at the higher point. Leclerc with a small mistake, but didn't lose anything. So the rain is going to keep falling. Joe finally pits. Alonso will be ahead of him, and so will Seb. So we'll gain a couple of places. Ocon also pits, which is interesting. What has Ocon gone for? Another set of inters. Okay, now the rain over four. So we're at heavy rain, full wet tyre territory. Ten laps to go, though. I'm going to gamble here. I'm going to try and go to the end on intermediates. Pierre Gasly into the pit lane. Does he go for the full wet? The rain is falling now, big time. But he goes for another set of inters. Seb's going to get eaten up here. Stroll, Joe on much fresher tyres, fighting back through. We could get lapped here. Science is catching, so let's take a closer look. Now look at this. It was the Alpha Tauri driver involved. So Stroll getting passed out of cops on Seb. Decent move there. I've set both drivers to push now, flat out, whatever's left, um, just to give everything. Yeah, I think this is our race done. Norris pits. Onto a set of inters, or maybe a set of drives. No, intermediate, surely. Yeah, another set of inters. Wow, two laps to go. Let's see what happened there. Let's so, take another look. There Joe. We have Joe. Around the outside, on Seb. Nice move there. Using the tyres to go by. And Seb now just got lapped, so Seb's race is finished. Alonso, lap and a half to go before we wrap up here. Right then, so Sainz crosses the line, and that means Sebastian's race is over, a lap down today. So Alonso down to 19% tyres as we are going to be closing out this race, battling Lance Stroll, the man who got replaced by Fernando. But what a fall from grace after securing a 1-2 finish in Canada last time. We take a big fat L in our home race in Silverstone. We had the chance, but we made the wrong call, pitting for the full wet. If we'd just gone for soft into inter, that would have been the perfect strategy for this race, but hindsight is a wonderful thing. Alonso holds on, but that is it. Race over. So let's check the flags. Yep, tough race. Oh well, on to the next one. We live and learn. So Carlos Sainz wins at Silverstone. Sergio Perez second for Stappen third after having that spin. Mercedes do find a bit of form here as Russell gets P4, Hamilton P6, Alex Albon P7 and Alpha Tauri colours, Ricardo P5 from McLaren as well, Bottas in the points. So yeah, not ideal. Luckily, Alpine don't really score any big points, only one with Gasly, so that's absolutely fine. We miss out, Alonso P12, Seb P16 in a lap down, a race to forget. In the Drivers' Championship, Sainz is the new leader as he overtakes Leclerc. Alonso down to 8th as Russell moves up. And Sebastian still P10. In the Constructors, we're still P5. Only five off LP, but Mercedes do open up a bit of a gap as they put 20 points into us this weekend. So, not ideal. Anyway, bonuses for this one. Uh, just under 1,000 for both drivers there. Not ideal. And no development point. And finally, cash payouts. We'll get full money as we had no bonuses for finishing the points. Okay, now this is the big one. Front wing design. We'll get this on for the next race. This is going to be mighty for us. Now we have a double header, which means I will manufacture two of them on emergency to get them on the car now. Now we have to vote on the sporting regulations for 2024. It seems like they want to push for double points in the finale. I'm not a fan of double points in the last race, so I'm going to vote against. I'm not really feeling it, to be honest. 
I don't even want feedback. I don't really want to vote for double points. Now, Filipe Drogovic has a point. We'll spend it on adaptability yet again, as that is his weakness. Let's make sure we speed up the underfloor. So we'll get speed it up a little bit. So this is now with the latest double upgrade on the car. So from the top, we've lost a bit of top speed. We're still 10th, which is not bad. Low speed has improved a little bit, and so has high speed. We're 17th in medium, which is not great. Uh, DRS is okay-ish. Dirty has improved quite a bit. Uh, 14th. Also, the cooling situation, which we knew was a problem for us, is looking a lot better. So we have taken some steps in the right direction. We'll see where the underfloor takes us. But I'd like to be like 15th as my lowest stat on all of these and hopefully be a bit higher on others. Next race, Austria, round 11, which will officially mark the halfway stage of the season. Power circuit, which is a good thing for us. However, our opponent is starting to get a little bit knackered. So I'm tempted to maybe put a fresh engine in for that one. But we'll see what happens. Either way, guys, if you enjoyed this one, leave a like and subscribe. It wasn't a classic, but we gave it a best shot. Got a strategy wrong. I did say I should have split the driver's strategy, and that's what I should have done. But you live and learn. And, uh, yeah, we'll try and do better and try to get back in the points in Austria. But, yeah, guys, just watching, as always. And I'll see you in the next one. Link down below to my Twitch. Go check it out when I stream these races. As always, check out two videos on screen if you haven't seen them. And I'll see you all in the next one. Take care. And let's go back from me.